Welcome to Quantum Revenue Expansion, where we share time-tested strategies to turn your annual revenue into your monthly revenue. Ready to up-level your business and your life? Then you will love listening in on the lively conversations Ursula has with her clients and guests as they share exactly what they did to grow and scale their business exponentially. Plus, you will discover how to experience more freedom, joy, and peace in your business and your life right now. If turning your annual income into your monthly income is your next step, then join us at the next 2X Intensive. Go to UrsulaInc.co slash apply. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Quantum Revenue Expansion, the podcast where we talk about turning your annual income into your monthly income. And as you can see, I'm hanging out with Rebecca Hall again. She's back. We're back together. We're going to hang out on the podcast today to, to bring you some some goodness for the new year, because if things aren't popping in your business, or maybe you just didn't check off all your goals last year, we want to help you do that. So today, and I want to make sure I get this right. Today we're talking about, I'm super excited about this. We're talking about how to lead and who to be as a six, seven, and eight figure CEO. So I'll say that again, how to lead and who to be as a six, seven, and eight figure CEO. So first, I just want to say hi to Rebecca. Welcome back. Hello. Today, we're going to have a conversation. Like this is as if you guys are listening in to our conversation at Caribou, because that's Rebecca's favorite coffee shop when she comes to Minnesota. And you just you just get to listen in because we want to we want to dig into kind of some of the things that happen behind the scenes. You know that things that we are celebrating as coaches things that we witnessed our clients um, moving through last year and their ultimate successes and some of their challenges as well. So we're going to, we're going to talk about all of that today with the focus on how you too can grow your multi six, seven, eight figure business, whatever that is for you. And if you haven't met Rebecca yet, you definitely want to go back and listen to some of our past shows together. Um, Rebecca is a, I can say this, it does make us sound old, but I can say she's a veteran business <laughs> coach. <laughs> Um, I, I am as well. We, we both together, we have about 50 years of experience or something like crazy like that. We've coached thousands and thousands of entrepreneurs. Rebecca has, uh, worked with startups. She's worked with hundred million dollar companies. She has, uh, jumped into family businesses. She, I don't even know, like you've worked with every industry and, The thing that Rebecca is so good at and what our clients, well, they love a lot about Rebecca, but what they really love about her is her ability to zero in on the thing. Like, what is the thing that's stopping me right now? And how can I clear that? How can I get it out of the way? Especially in the areas of team systems, operation, process, leadership. And of course, Rebecca has, the last few years has also dived into really the quantum world with me. And so she brings those to the conversations as well. So that's a little bit about Rebecca's background. You guys know me, but if you've been hanging out for, with us for a while, um, if you haven't, welcome. We're super excited that you're here. My background is in business growth, business development as well. I'm an author, I'm a speaker. And my passion as well as Rebecca's is really helping our clients go from 200,000 to 500,000, 500,000 to 750, 750 to a million, a million to 2 million and beyond. And so anyway, so I I just, I wanted to bring that to this, this podcast today. And also if you haven't yet, if you haven't hung out with us at the 2X Intensive yet, you're missing out. It's two days that I guarantee will change the trajectory of your year and potentially your life. And I don't say that lightly. Like I mean that because we've seen what has happened when clients have come through the 2X Intensive. So if you want to learn more about that, you can go to www dot ursulainc.co forward slash apply. It's in the show notes as well. Send us a little bit of information. We'll set up a private call with you. One of us, Rebecca or I, will jump on that call and learn more about your business and whether or not we can help you. So so let's just let's dive in, Rebecca. Like we we were chatting, we do prepare for these. So believe it or not, it's just not a conversation we're just diving into. But we we were chatting a little bit yesterday, uh just about some of the things that we wanted to talk about today that we believe are really important to CEOs and and business owners, and especially given what's happening in the world and what's happened the last three years. So Rebecca, if you want to kind of launch back into that conversation and let them in in on what we were talking about, (laughs) probably a good place to start. Yeah. I I think like the first thing I want to say 
that may or may not be a shock to everybody is everything that we talk about on this show, we're doing. <laughs> not we did. Like, remember that one time back in the early 1900s or the late 1900s when we decided to become entrepreneurs? Uh, the reason we were having the conversation yesterday is because this is what we're doing right now. And I had shared some things that I had um, put into effect over the last, you know, 30 days or so to, to keep me on the edge of my game. And so we were talking about how, look, nuts and bolts are out there. There, there is so much activity. In fact, I have an email in my email box and I'm going to, I'm, uh, I starred because I want to respond to it. And, uh, it's somebody who's somehow got my email here at Ursula Inc and is trying to, uh, get me to get a list of HR executives that I can sell to. I got that same email. Okay. So I'm going to respond to her because, uh, I got another email that's like, I'm really surprised you didn't respond to my first email. And I'm just like, so curious about why she's so surprised. Clearly somebody gave her that template, right? Or she thinks that's the template. <clears throat> and it's not to call her out. I really want to respond and just help her and say, hey, can I just point out that A, I've never opted into your list. B, what what title do you think I have here? And C, why do you think... Um, I would be interested in an HR executive list, hence why you're surprised I did not respond, right? <laughs> and it was just such a great example of, you know, the conversations that you and I have all the time are, who's our target market? What's going on with our clients? What do they need? What are they saying? Like if they coach with you or if they coach with me, like we're really trying to drill down into what is the actual conversation? Not the, not the conversation I want to push, on my market or push on my people or that I want that my, my here's my, my funny thing. What's my brand, right? I was talking to my brother the other day and we we're talking about his daughter and she's a teenager and struggling. And it's like, kids have to know their brand by the time they're 12. How terrible is that? Right? You start, you start, you know, putting together and it's like, let's just talk about what is. So this is what Ursula and I talk about. We talk about what is. Um, we talk about very personal things. Uh, a lot of clients know a lot of personal things about us yeah. because those are that's who we're being right now. And we want to be transparent because if I'm going through something in my business and your business is a little bit, you know, uh, newer than mine, then wouldn't you want to know exactly how I handled it? Right. So I think it's just such an important thing. So I want everyone to know that the things that we're talking about are the things that our business, Ursula Inc., is doing right now. It's the things that we're going through right now. It's the troubleshooting we're doing right now. And part of that is that check-in to like, what do you really want? How does that really feel to you? And I've said before, Ursula, that doesn't feel good to me. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And vice versa. So it's just such a huge thing, um, which warrants this conversation today. So I'm actually really excited to talk about who, what, what we try to do, who we're trying to be in serving our clients and what we've noticed when we've been willing to be vulnerable, um, not just with our clients, but be vulnerable with ourselves and, and the help or the assistance or support that we reach out for, um, to make Ursula Inc. amazing and give our clients an amazing experience. Yeah. So many things to unpack there. I think that like just high level, the transparency piece, we are very transparent with our clients and I, we do hear from them that they appreciate that. They're, I think they appreciate when we share the tough stories more than the celebrations, like the struggles <laughs> yeah, that we've had. And let's face it, anyone who's still in business coming out of the pandemic, which Apparently there is still a pandemic. I don't know. I got an email the other day. So I, you know, I don't mean to make light of it. I'm just, I think we're all confused. And there is, and, and of course, like, I don't know if you guys have noticed, if you haven't been under a rock, you've noticed this, right? The last year has been all about the, um, the impending recession, the coming recession, mm -hmm. right? Like it's going to get here someday. It's coming. It's coming all year. People have been using that. Like it's, it's, you know, been clickbait. It's been fear mongering. I've gotten emails about it. It's like, what are you going to do? Well, the other day, you know, I, I just happened to catch the job reports, you know, our unemployment is at like 3.5%. And I know there's economists out there who are going to be like, well, there's this and there's that. But at the end of the day, like, what if you didn't have to care about that? Of course, you keep an eye on what's going on. But what if 
a recession really didn't matter to your business because frankly, for most of our listeners, right, who are around 200, 500,000, even a million, there's more than enough business for you, no matter what the economy is doing, because we witnessed our clients having their best years ever during the pandemic. And Rebecca and I were shocked. Like we didn't know, no one knew what was happening, right? We thought our business was going under. We had to pivot the word of 2020. Like all those things had to happen. There was a lot of fear. There was, you know, just a lot. Like we went through that with our clients. And then all of a sudden it was like, they were blowing their numbers out of the water because we made some shifts. We created a new container. We created the CEO table. We created the 2X intensive. People were getting these great results from coming through those programs. And the pandemic in some ways allowed people to get stronger, allowed Mm -hmm. a lot of people to subtract, like get rid of the things they didn't need anymore, get rid of things that they shouldn't be doing anymore. Right. And also to what we noticed is those who were still in business got really transparent and got really clear on what they knew they were supposed to be up to. Yeah. Like for a long time, we were sales coach. Now we did sales mm-hmm. training and we felt the call. We knew our clients knew how to sell. They wanted to learn how to scale, but I just didn't put the things in motion. Well, the pandemic hit and I was like, we burned sales coaching out of the ground. We built Ursula Inc. We built well, let's pull the curtain back. Let's yeah, pull the curtain back for a yeah. second there. Because I burned it down. Yeah. Here's the truth of what happened, right? Like, uh, late March of 2020, we had a conversation and we proverbially shook hands and wished each other well, right? Because this is the end. And, uh, you know, what, what actually, what caused that, if you will, the Phoenix rising, (laughs) right. Of the new brand is, um, in our hearts, we're like, oh my gosh, we have some clients that are unfulfilled on what they paid for. And so, out of goodwill, right? Because that's who we are. We're like, we're going to see this through. And so in that, in that space and time, we patched together a solution so that we could fulfill and make good on our customer yeah. promise. And in the midst of that, in, and, and we were, we were very transparent. We're like, Hey, this is what we're going to do. We feel like it's the right thing to do. And you and I were kind of like on our last, uh, we were on our farewell concert tour. <laughs> yeah. We were also and, uh, the and time, right? The money was drying up. Yeah, exactly. The, and no one knew what to do. I mean, uh, colleagues in our industry were like, well, you know, whatever. So that pivot did come from that surrender, but it also came when you want to talk about who you're being, like that's who we were being. We know that this is not going to continue. However, we really need to get these clients taken care of. And in the current situation, you know, that is the right thing to do. And how will we do it? So, you know, again, I want to be super clear about that practice. This isn't like Ursula and I huddled up and said, hey, there's a huge pandemic. How can we take advantage of this? <laughs> How can we take advantage of our customers or or whatever and like really come out of this great, right? It, it, it really was a good test of just like who we were as people. Yeah. And when you surrender and let go and really trust the being, um, then go ahead. Yeah. Burns end up bringing sales coach down to the ground that happened the fall of 2020. Um, and because we were starting to see and, and really get lit up by what was happening. And then I think after that point, it was like, like, just let's hold on tight, which then created a whole new level of growth. Right. And so I think that's just important for people to know, um, you know, when we come across these things, it, it is all about frequency. You know, it is all about like really what you're believing about yourself. And at that moment, what we believed about ourselves is we were obligated. We wanted to continue to uh, fulfill our contracts. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that's super important because I, that is about who we're being. And we know people who had to walk away from their businesses who Mm -hmm. didn't fulfill for a variety of reasons, right? Or financially just couldn't swing it. And it was, it was, you know, It was a day by day thing. Like if we all go back to the beginning, I just felt like every day was super long as we were trying to navigate what to do. And I I don't want to gloss over like the pain of that, you know, for us or for anybody else, uh, because we did face closing the business. We thought, yes, um, maybe this is it. I, I didn't know. I will say this though, at that same time when, and this is one of the things we practice, I practice this all the time when money 
seems like it's gone or scarce or things are really tight. That is when I double down. So that Mm -hmm. is when I hired a coach. Like Mm -hmm. I, I knew that I couldn't get through that. Like I just, I felt lost and I needed somebody who had both the business strategy and the quantum revenue and wasn't inside of our business. Someone who would be like, eh, you know, who cares about like, not who cares about the pandemic, but like, you can rise out of this. You can rise above this. You can recreate the company you're meant to have. And I think without that support, it would have been a lot harder. And I think for, I think that's surprising to a lot of people, like even how many times have we done that? You've seen me do this where, you know, it's a 50,000 or six figure almost investment or whatever it is. I don't, there's never, that money's never in the bank account in that moment. I'm not like, oh, you know, if this doesn't work, it's like, I go into it with like, this is, this has to work. (laughs) We're going to make this work. And I think when you're in business, it's so easy to think, oh, like I'm going to do this, but like, let's see what happens. And I think that gets people stuck because even something like, even if you, if you jump into a marketing program or something and it's, you know, or a, a coaching program, and it's not exactly what you thought it was, I guarantee you, you're getting some, you're going to learn something from it that you need to know right now. <laughs> and yeah. out of integrity, it's a leadership piece. Like you, you, you stay in, right. You finish out your contract or whatever it is. And your information is always coming through. It's like, are you paying attention to it? And that's not to say that if someone's not delivering, of course, like you would end that relationship. But, uh, but I have found that whenever I feel stuck, doubling down on marketing, on coaching, on training mm-hmm. is, is what pulls us to that next level. Yeah. And there's plenty of examples of that, right? There's plenty of examples of that everywhere. Um, I, you know, I was laughing when you were talking earlier because people are talking about a recession. They're talking about, you know, not being able to make certain payments in their lives or, or whatever, right? We see utilities, we see food prices go up. And, you know, people are up in arms and, and you know, I don't want to like beat that dead horse, but what's so interesting, what I notice is Taylor Swift broke Ticketmaster, <laughs> right? Um, you know, Adele and her Vegas residency tickets knows, I mean, $3,000. So I'm always asking myself if, I, if economically we are doing so terrible, how are people figuring out how to go to Taylor Swift? Or just how are they figuring out how to go to the Super Bowl? Or an NFL football game when the tickets are six, seven, eight hundred dollars. Or Disney World. Exactly. You know, some of these people, uh, and I was like, you know, with the pandemic, people were staying home. So uh, home improvements. When it's like, well, this is my reality now. Like, how do I make my space that I'm going to be in a lot more more comfortable, or you know, accommodate it for homeschooling kids? Like, money is flowing during a recession. Money is flowing. You know, everyone's playing Powerball. It's like there, if you look around you, right. It, and again, I think I've talked about this on another uh, session that we've done is it's a matter of like uh, poverty and prosperity are on the same line in the quantum, right? It's what, which way do you want to turn your head? And I think that's where you can do a frequency check on yourself, right? Like, what am I, what am I focused on right now? What is my frequency? Is my frequency uh, pointing towards uh, the recession and things that aren't working? Because dang, you're so powerful. You will attract that stuff. And and this is why we're doing this session today, because we talk so much about how do you feel about that? What are you focused on? What's showing up for you? Like we do that to each other all the time. And we, and we do it outside. Like you and I both have separate coaches. Um, I had a coach the other day that was talking to me about shame and literally said, shame is what keeps um, wealth from us. We actually hold it off because of shame and as a species, as humanity, just how we deal with that. And then we think about in the business world, um, we talked about a certain particular former president (laughs) who's very popular, both on the good and the not so good side. And I said, you know, at the end of the day, 50 million plus people voted for him and 50 million plus people didn't. How do you think he felt knowing that 50 plus million people didn't think he was good enough for the job. He doesn't care. He's still going strong, no matter what, no matter what happens, still go strong. And we know that about a lot of business people, whether you, you know, whether you believe that they're economically sustainable or they're doing the right thing for the planet, like really like if we're talking about belief, let's just put all that stuff aside. And those people, 
those big players in our world, those wealthy people, what they all share is an incredible belief in themselves. A belief that millions, billions, trillions is possible, a belief that they deserve to be on top, a belief that what they're doing matters. Yeah. And, you know, that's just, it's such, though, those things, who we're being, what our beliefs are, what we focus on is, is so paramount. I had someone tell me yesterday also as well, another coach, uh, I have like three or four coaches right now, um, because we're so focused on who we're being, right? Like you and I are so focused on it. So we're really, we're really paying attention to that, that, you know, beliefs sit in the root chakra. That is where your beliefs are. So being grounded, like not letting people take you off on these weird tangents or, or um, just grabbing at straws, like maybe this will solve my problem. Maybe this will solve my problem. Maybe this will solve my problem. Like being grounded is even so important when it comes to your belief system. So the evidence is out there, guys. You've got plenty of people that are like, I'm going to be incredibly wealthy during this so-called recession that's coming. I'm actually excited if it comes because it's going to be my time. And you have other people that are like, we are hunkering down. I hope we make it through this. This, you know, this is terrible. And, you know, whatever you think you're right. And you will attract the news stories. You'll attract the people. You'll attract Anybody who, you know, is in your line of thinking, who is sitting in your frequency, your vibration, which is why, Ursula, you and I, that's what we give our clients, right? We give them all kinds of resources. We, that's why we share because we want to help hold the belief with them. And honestly, I like that they hold it with me, that prosperity is there, that I can build out of this, that we're doing the right thing, that that life can doesn't actually have to be doom and gloom. It doesn't have to be this roller coaster ride of what's the stock market doing today? What is the job reports doing today? Right. So I, it's just super important to have this conversation. And I would ask our, if you're listening, I would ask, like, check in on yourself. What is your belief system? You know, what is it pointing to right now? Is it pointing towards fear and lack or is it pointing towards you know prosperity? Is it pointing towards you really do know that what you have to offer? is impactful in a positive way that people actually need what you want that you are solving a problem because how you start your day in that belief it means everything so definitely check in you know are you leaning more towards one side of the frequency or the other side and where do you want to be and who can help you get there you know we spend a lot of time with our clients uh once a week minimum uh making sure that we're creating the frequency or that we're part of a frequency that we want Mm-hmm. Yeah, such a great point of just what are you focusing on and and what's showing up in your world? And you said this before too, like we forget how powerful we are. Mm-hmm. And for everyone who's listening, like if you've forgotten that, this is your reminder. And I have a feeling like people who hang out with us, they they they're very aware of this quantum world that we live in, that our thoughts impact our world, that our thoughts impact our things. And and so you know, this, this might be the reminder that, that you need, that you can totally create whatever business you want this year. In fact, Rebecca and I, this morning, we're celebrating another email from one of our clients, a long time client who came back <laughs> and uh, like, she's rebuilding her company right now and will break through the seven figure mark this year for the first time and was celebrating, you know, I think what'll turn into a six figure, multi six figure contract. I mean, has completely up leveled her pricing. And we're just so, so happy. And her belief, right? And her belief. belief, Like, oh my God. Part of that, part of that was just really her saying, is this possible? And, and, and really just like changing a few words uh, and changing a little bit of how she is showing up. Which creates that client, that contract to be like, yeah, let's. I'm in. Right. Right. So it's just, it's so, so important. And what was interesting about this client, because she's been with us for a long time, like in different, you know, different stages of her business, like she'll do really well. And then we won't see her for, and then she like comes back and says, I'm ready to go to the next level. And it does come down to what's stopping you from moving forward. And it's not, it's not a marketing plan. It's not like, well, if I just had this one extra person on my team that yes, you need those things a hundred percent. Right. But 
it really does come down to like, what are you doing to hold yourself back? And we've talked in the past about, hey, what are you tolerating? This is different. It's not about what you're tolerating. This does go back to what we're talking about today, which is who are you being? And so what are you holding on to? What old story? I will tell you here, we'll pull the curtain behind one, one more time for me. I'm in a program right now that um, part of my program is every like six or eight weeks, I get a new set of uh, I statements. Um, and the way that they give you the I statements is they energetic test them or whatever. So here's the very first I statement that comes across that I'm like, are you kidding me? But apparently this is somewhere. It says it is okay for me to have more money than other people i.e. my family, my friends, and the poor. And I'm like, dang, why, why is that showing up? And so, you know, I'm totally willing to look at that. And I would say in full transparency, there's a part of me, maybe a little bit of shame where it's like, look, you know, I want to make sure I'm doing my part in the world. I also want to be comfortable. And I know what that number is to be comfortable, but where am I holding myself back from? It's just like really just letting all money flow to me that, that, that is coming my way. And what am I doing to like, hold off some of it? And I know some of the things I do. I'm good. I'm, I'm very fortunate. I have a very blessed life, especially financially. It's, it's very good. And then I think about, I hung out with a buddy over the weekend and who has a nonprofit and I'm like, man, I, I would love to donate some more money to him. And it's like, you know, having more money would allow me to do that. And so even like right now in this present time, you know, I'm working on checking my beliefs, especially around money and wealth. Um, and so, because it's not linear, right? It, when you talk about the quantum, it, it is really like a fire hose or you're, you're really kinking the hose. <laughs> There's no like dial on quantum where you're like, I'll take this much quantum, right? You really want to be in a space to, to get everything that's coming to you in that way in prosperity. So, you know, real world example right here, that this is what you and I work on all the time yeah. currently. Yeah. I have a coach who only works with me on beliefs and I teach it, coach it, all the things, but you can't, it's so hard to do it yourself. Like it's, I would say, or almost impossible to just work on it yourself. It's so helpful to have someone, you know, clearing beliefs with you or helping you identify them. Mm -hmm. And I'm always surprised, you know, in kind of like, you talk about this a lot, but the idea of gamifying things. So I've gotten to the point where I just gamify my beliefs because I'll be like, what, like what's blocking over here? And then it'll kind of come in. It's like, oh, I need to clear that. Like, I don't even know where that came from. And yet you and I both. I'm sorry. My dog's saying hi. Uh, (laughs) Sorry about that. (laughs) Real world. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no need to apologize at all. We um, will introduce your dog. Go ahead and introduce your dog so everyone can. Oh, you know. let's see if she'll come up. This is Coda. Coda. I thought it was Coda. Then I'm like, is that Coda's tail? Yeah. Um, she's an old senior citizen dog. So, you know, she's great though. And we all, I mean, it's like, we, um, I think that, so this is one of the things I want to talk about too. It's like, the belief piece of, um, expand, you know, constantly being in the work of the beliefs, holding the beliefs and recognizing that, you know, Rebecca and I, I think that's one of the reasons we, we always connected is because we did have very interesting childhoods. And I just say Mm -hmm. interesting because I don't want to put any energy toward it, but I think a lot of people had interesting childhoods and because of those, like, you know, and our parents, most of them, you know, weren't out to like, do things on purpose. They were just living their lives and their challenges. Right. And so sometimes it's surprising to see the beliefs and the things that we brought into our lives, our businesses, the baggage that we carry. And so it's definitely something that Rebecca and I talk about a lot, because if you don't take time to identify it, to shift it, to let it go, it's like you, you will stay blocked. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say that it's not hard. It's not painful. I mean, I've been working on this for, I don't know, how old am I? 48 years now. So it's like, and it doesn't end. I remember talking to one of my therapists and uh, she did something called QNRT, which was really cool. It was really good at just moving energy and stuff, stuff out of your, out of your brain. But anyway, I was chatting with her one day about, and I was like, I can't, there's something that came up from my childhood. And I was like, I can't believe this is coming up again. And she just laughed at me. 
She goes, just yeah. so you know, I have a 95 year old client and we're still clearing stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, I got it. So, yeah. so who we're being affects how we're leading. Right. And, and it's interesting. Hopefully most of you had a chance to listen to my conversation with Amy Tyson. We talked about her predictions and mm-hmm. Chinese metaphysics going into this year. There's a lot about, you know, women and um, not that guys are being pushed out. It's just like a lot of women are rising in leadership positions and in their businesses. We talked a lot about mental health and like just holding space for that. And, and you know, and that the 2023 though, I, I don't know about all of you, but I definitely feel, I feel like we left a lot behind in 2022, the stuff that needed to be left behind. And given 2022 had the magical twos, I thought, oh, 2022 is going to be so easy. In a lot of ways, it was great, but it just felt like just a lot of baggage. I will say, and I don't know about you, Rebecca, but I like opening up 2023, it feels very spacious to me, but almost to the point where it's like a little unnerving. Yeah. Because there's like this huge, like so much was cleared out that there's like, I feel like I have this huge blank canvas. And at times, I'm not sure which paintbrush to grab or which color to use. So how has 2023 felt for you? I mean, it just feels super, it just felt very spacious, very, yeah. open. and in some ways that feels kind of unnerving. Exactly. Because I think, you know, we walked into 2020. Uh, I think a lot of us walked in 2020, like it's 2020. I mean, numerically we're going to kill it. Right. right. Like, oh yes. Oh, I remember. Yeah. January. Right. So we were like very, uh, we were over like the market, everything was doing great. Right. So everyone's like this, we're going to like quantum the heck out of this thing. And then 2021, we were like, okay, so this is our new life. And 2022, we're like, we're coming out of this. Right. And it was like, no, you're not. And 2023 is like, well, you really need to be ready for anything, but like, you're still here. So there's a lot possible. So I don't want to say that we're going into 2023 with some trepidation. I, I'm thinking that we're going into 2023 uh, very strong and not so set in stone about what is to be, but to know that we will be and what do you want that to look like? And I'm very open to what happens this year. I'm very clear about what my goals are. I'm very clear about who I want to be this year and um, what I want to let go of. And uh, what I want to be vulnerable about. So I'm very open. And yet under all that, I know I'm still going to be here in 2024. Yeah. Yeah. And beyond. So, you know, I think that's, I, I like to say I have a, like, I'm holding the reins of a horse and I've got a, I mean, I've got control of the horse, but I'm not like gripping the reins like this, trying to like make something happen. I think that's, I think it's a gift. I'm really excited about this year. I don't know what's going to happen. Um but I know that it's going to be good no matter what I know I'm going to survive and probably thrive. I would say, um, in a lot of areas of my life. Uh, but that comes from that belief and it comes from trusting, you know, what we've gone through Mm -hmm. and knowing that I have the support, I would say, um, I've really loaded up on support for this year in, uh, business, personal, uh, physical, mental, Um, I'm, I'm really reaching out, uh, and really like putting my team together this year because I do expect big things. And so, yeah, like you talked earlier about the investment, um, man, personally, I got annihilated in the stock market (laughs) and you know, it's funny. It'll come back. I'm not worried about it, but, um, when money's in place, like sometimes people think, well, you're, you know, Ursula's talked about, you know, my wife and I sold a business for multi-millions uh, a few years ago. And, but the money's in play, right? It's like, if you're really smart with your money, you're not just like stuffing your mattress full of money. So there's still, you still have, your money still has to be in play. And there's things that I want to do where I'm like, I'm going to have to move some money around or money just shows up. Um, but you're still playing the game. I, I always said people live on what they make. You, you make 50 grand a year. That's what you live on. You make 5 million a year. You're living on that um to whatever extent uh that it takes it's just money's just energy in fact i will plug uh deepak uh chopra's book abundance um fantastic read and what really stood out to me is hey as humanity we've identified currency as the way that we measure things in this world that that's just what it is right and even more importantly we need to have it because currency 
creates the equality in a transaction. Yes. Uh, for instance, he said, you can't, you can't trade a mountain bike for a dozen eggs. You have to have money to equal out. And, and when money is that tool, right? And this is another check-in for you. How do you feel about money? Do you feel like we're going into a recession? Do you feel like you don't have enough? Do you feel like you have to hold on to everything? Mm -hmm. You know, I, it's funny how you see some people that won't invest in one thing, but then the next thing they're on a nice trip to Mexico. Right. And again, there's no judgment there. It's just like, that's an, that's an area for that person to say, Hey, am I blocked in the area of investing in myself to improve my life or my business? And I'd rather invest my money to go, you know, feed something else that I have inside. There's no good, bad, right, wrong about that. But I truly believe there's plenty of money to go around for everybody. I truly believe that if you really want something, uh, you can actually afford to pay for it. In fact, when we talk to clients or people that want to be clients, I do say, hey, the hardest decision you have to make is, is this the program for you? Right. And if it is, figuring out how to pay for it is really easy. And it really is. When I show them like, hey, here's, here's how we put this together. Like, oh yeah, that's not a problem at all. So it really is like that check-in yeah. for you to say, hey, where, where am I showing up right now? What am I investing in? And what's the return I expect? If I tell our clients, if you invest in us, you, you should absolutely expect a return. Uh, this isn't something that, hey, we hope you have a good time here and that all your dreams come true. Like, you know, we've got a plan and, and here's the plan and it better include, uh, you know, a 2X or, or more of your business. And so I think, you know, us working together with the clients, when we hold that belief together is one of the reasons why we're seeing such a huge success with our clients um, because we really work to, like you said, create that container and belief uh, is part of that container a hundred percent. So in time to that, you know, going back to this, this year being expansive and who, who do want people want to be like, what do they want to create? One, I, I think one of the things that we did last year, or I, I definitely did, and we did it together for the company is we subtracted a lot of things, right? We took them <laughs> yeah. out. We deleted a lot of stuff. We deleted systems, processes that were no longer working. Uh, we let go of programs or ways of doing programs that, you know, and, and I, and part of, I think for me this year feeling so expansive is because we've cleared so much off the deck because truly who I have to be to lead the company to that next level is not who I was in 2022. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are feeling that I, I feel this with you that there's this sense of, you know, you're being called to do more, you're being called to expand, you're being called to be more, you're being called to lead at a higher level, and you have to heed that. And in that yeah. moment, like what else needs to come off your plate? What else needs to be yeah. streamlined in your company? What are the processes and systems that like are bottlenecks, right? And it's so interesting, Rebecca, when we work with clients and we do a two hour intensive, a two X, and no, excuse me, after, um, after clients decide to do the CEO table with us, we do a two hour intensive session with them, with the two of us and the client. And it's never what they think it's going to be like what comes through. And often it's, uh, you know, it's, it's like the big things right away that we can work on that need to shift. Yeah. And then over time, it's the little things. Like I was thinking of a client this morning who'd emailed us who, um, is selling a, you know, a product through somebody else basically. And there's just a, like, she just needed to open up the opportunity even wider to see long-term what it could be. Like they, there was some concern, like, are we going to lose clients? What's going to happen? Are they going to lose mm -hmm. clients? But it, we just need to open it up. So often I think in business, we feel like here's my question and I'm stuck. Well, and then what happens when you put an and in there and what else is possible? And if I expand this a little more, what else is there? Because for everyone, your business is asking for expansion right now. Your business is always asking to grow. The question to ask yourself, am I willing to grow with it? Because often that's that can involve change. It's a little bit painful. You're going to be doing different things. And so we can get we can get stuck. Yeah. So we are fun. like, I we're out of time. We talked about it, we covered a lot of areas. I just look, I don't know. I wanted to look at my notes and see if there was anything else. I think we got all the highlights that we wanted to cover. Rebecca, yeah. Is there anything else you wanted to add? Or what would you say to someone who's out there listening right now that's 
thinking like, I've been listening to these two for a while. Yeah. You guys should come and hang out. You know what? Action is everything. Action, uh, actually, action gives you like, you know, uh, the roots, right? It gives you like, hey, is this possible or not? We, you know, we talk about belief or not a lot and I can believe something, but without action, the belief doesn't come to fruition, right? And um, we live in a world where there's so much information. There's so many good nuggets out there. There's so many podcasts. There's so many people to follow. And and I would just say, you know, I'm kind of feeling like, look, if you're listening to this and you've listened to Ursula and I before, and you've never attended one of our One Great Goal retreats or anything like that, I would encourage you to have some action. We try to give you little things in here, like, you know, definitely want you to check in on your beliefs, but you owe it to yourself to really step out of your comfort zone. You owe it to yourself to really go for it. Um, and we're doing this. And that's why I feel called to say, hey, I'm I'm doing this. I'm stepping out. Ursula's stepping out. So step out. Like what, what's the action that you can take to let go of something that doesn't serve you, to be more expansive in your business or your life? You know, like what what is that fantastical thing that you could do to just try? Like you know, go ahead and test, go ahead and test the universe and see what happens. I think it's, I think you'll get something really big out of it. Um, we are here to learn and grow. We are here to give, we are here to make an impact. Um, and so what are you waiting for? Like yeah. make that impact. What's the action that you can take? And I would, I would love to hear your story, you know, comment, comment on this podcast, uh, you know, take a chance and be vulnerable but we're, we're definitely about action. Um, and sometimes it's scary to put yourself out there. Sometimes when you bet on yourself, it's scary because sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> and Ursula, I could do a whole other podcast on all the things we've done. <laughs> that have not worked. Yeah. But um, I don't regret any of it because I got something out of it and it led me to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. So um, hopefully you feel how much we care about you as listeners and as our clients and people in our community, we do it because we love it. And we do it because, uh, this is the best use of who we believe we are and what we're doing is helping our clients get to their next up level. So definitely take action. Yeah, that's a great, that's a perfect invitation. And you can do that. You can go to our homepage, Ursula Inc.co. And on the homepage, you can see our quantum revenue expansion masterclass. You're welcome to grab that. That's mm -hmm. a free gift. And anyone who dives into that material always emails us and tells us that it just made a great impact on their business. If you're ready to like take another step from there, you can go to UrsulaInc.co forward slash apply, send us a few of your details and Rebecca or I will jump on a private call with you and talk to you about how we think we can, you know, if we think we can help you in business and it's never high pressure. Like if we think we can help you, we definitely want to work with you. If it's not a fit right now, we have other resources and other people we can, we'd love to refer you to. I think what the yeah. invitation is to take some kind of action today. We also, um, we also do want to encourage you to comment. If you're watching this on YouTube, definitely leave us a comment there or wherever you're listening, leave us a comment or a, um, uh, if you feel called to leave a review, leave a review as well. And we want to give a shout out to Patrick. Patrick, hopefully you're listening. Thank you for all of your comments. You are our <laughs> top commenter. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um all like keeping in touch with you and all of your comments so hopefully this was valuable to you and all of our listeners all over the world rebecca thanks for hanging out again today appreciate you have an amazing 2023 everybody amen everybody have a great year and make this most epic month yet thank you for joining us today and if you are ready to make your next quantum leap let's do it Ursula invites you to join us at the 2X Intensive. Go to salescoachnow.com slash apply. Don't forget to leave us a review on your favorite podcast app.